Hey, this is Al Bain from Al Bain for Leather, and we've traveled to Prescott, Arizona to hang out with Mr. Bob Jika of Jika Amplification. We're going to talk about his awesome amplifiers. How you doing, Bob? Good. How about yourself? Uh, the voice, the invisible man, our good buddy Denny Stelly back there running the show. We're here to help him and C4OCRadio.com. But as far as buzzwords of boutique or whatever, I don't even like that word. I don't like to be called a boutique, boutique amp builder. I, I like it to be known that I just build really good amps, you know. Um, and I, I don't like to categorize them, but... Uh, okay, so so your amps are an original design. So you've just basically designed the amp from the ground up, am I right? Yes. Okay, so you've created an entire circuit? You've selected different components to make that circuitry behave a certain way. What are the characteristics of that circuit that's different than the everyday amp? I know why a person starts building an amplifier. Does a person start building an amplifier because he goes, I want to be in the boutique amp business and build a copy of a brown face fender or whatever, you know? Um, that, that, that's just to build another amp? I mean, just to have a business, just to say, I don't want to you know, work as a, as a carpenter or something, so I'm going to build amplifiers. So, so, I mean, so long story short, why, why did I even decide I need to design an amplifier? Okay, let's, let me ask that question. Okay. So, why did you decide to build amplifiers? Well, because I was dealing with all these vintage amps before they were even vintage back then, and they don't sound like the records. Okay, they just don't sound like what's on the recordings. And you, you, you get down to the real deal of what's going on there, and you've got engineers in the studio making this stuff sound good. You put a 100 watt Marshall in the room, you plug a cord into it and turn it up, and whoa, you know, it's... <laughs> it's, it's a far cry from what you're hearing yeah, on the exactly, record. Exactly. So then, how did you approach that and try to bridge that gap so that your end product sounds like the record? Clean slate, you know, I mean, the, I knew what I wanted, and, and so that's what I went after, you know. And that all started from the circuit, right? You, you know where it starts from? Now, I'm, get, I'm difficult to interview, so... <laughs> that's all right. Frustrated. We're all friends here. It's no big deal. It starts with your concept of tone, okay? So, um, it, if someone's designing an amplifier and showing you their stuff or whatever in any way like for any purpose you know a guitar player should be interested in you know what's this guy's idea of tone like in the first place you know because there's no right tone there's no one tone that's right and another that isn't it's uh but, but what that designer whether he's copying an amp like even if he's just copying a marshall if he doesn't have the right concept of tone to copy that Marshall, it ain't going to come out sounding exactly like that. And that, that's not what I do, but that would be, say, what a, what a clone builder would do. Um, so even there, the concept of somebody's tone would have to be important because you'd have to know if he knew what he was doing in that regard, let alone me coming up with a whole new sound, which really isn't a new sound. I'm just trying to get the sounds that those guys got in the studio were right out of the speakers, you know. So what so, do you think is the origin of tone? Where does it actually come from? So you would say, because you, you're not a guitar player, right? So this oh. is a perfect person to ask this question, okay? So you would say, you know, I'm out at the club with this guitar player friend of mine and, and, and this guy's playing and he goes, man, that guy's got a good tone, right? But you'd say, and tell me if I'm right or wrong. He'd say, but I was with him last night at another gig at a club, and he never said nothing, and that guy sounded pretty good too, but he didn't, he didn't comment on that guy's tone. Right? So what are we all saying when we say that, guy, that guy's got a, got a good tone, right? Well, for most guitar players, when they comment on another guitar, I'm not supposed to be looking at this camera, right? When they comment on another guy's tone, it would be that they understand how hard it is to put that original tone that you have together and all the pieces that are making that happen. And even if what you heard, that guy who told you that, he didn't even like that guy's tone. He wouldn't go after it himself. It's not something he would want, but it's a good tone because he realizes that it all fits his style, his playing style, and everything is working just right. 
even if some of the equipment isn't as good as it should have been, he'll force it and make it work for him, you know? And that's what, the, what, what that all is. And, and so if you said, you know, you pick a Stevie Ray Vaughan and an Eric Johnson or whatever, you know, and you could say, that guitarist, if you never heard a song and it just got released and you heard the first two notes of that song, you could say, oh, I know who that is, right away. Because that, that's a different thing now. That's another level of this conversation. That's a guy who, who, between all his equipment in his hands, is so identifiable in his sound, you know. Um, so that too. But when you talk about somebody designing something, it, it's kind of good to know where they're coming from for tone. So again, I said there's no right way, no wrong way. But if you want to ask me, you know, what, 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 is a good tone to me it's right here okay this you have to have this first okay you have to have a guitar that sounds good and feels good all right that's where it all starts and if you plug this into an amplifier that makes that go away that i don't understand that that to me is is all wrong now to other people it works they, they've got such a ridiculous thing going on with the amplifier that it could be any guitar and it wouldn't matter um, and then for others it's, it's the opposite it, it, it better not ruin what this does um, so you're saying that the amplifier itself can intentionally deter the tone that's coming from the guitar right and if you don't have a guitar that sounds good you're done I mean I don't care what kind of amplifier you have if you don't feed it with something that's got some tone, you know, then, then there's a problem there. So to me, this is sacred right here. This is, this is where it all starts, you know. And uh, I mean, you, you, you just get inside a note. Will that camera hear that? Yeah. There it will. There it will. You know, it, it's like the amp needs this. It, it's, 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 where, it's where it's at. So that's where I start from. I start from don't ruin this. Whatever you do, don't ruin this. Well, uh, yesterday when we were talking, you had mentioned uh, more than one time, that's why I remember so well, that somebody doesn't have it in their fingers, whether they have it in their right. fingers to give it to the guitar also. Yeah, yeah. That's all very important too. That. That all comes from, I mean, there's so much involved in it. it, it's just, you know, it gets really complicated and, and hard to get it all out. Okay, so the signal's coming from the guitar down a cable and into a, a couple little devices into the head and out through the speaker. So let's, let's focus a little bit on what's happening with that signal and how your circuitry and your approach to it is having the outcome that you've desired. Okay, um, this is pretty complicated, but you, so um, the, the you're going to have uh, you're going to have front end gain. Uh, all, all. I was going to ask that question a little bit later, considering right. that the gain master seems to be a vital component in this pedal trick. Right? It's huge. It's huge for me. It it actually uh, changed everything for me on on how I design because. You have this world of amplifiers where, and all you guys out there that know what you're doing are going to know what I'm talking about here. Amps of a certain wattage get played at different places, okay? You're allowed to play this loud because, you know, you really want to have an amp up to a certain level where it's really working hard. And um, if that's too loud for that place, well, not, now you're, you're done. That, that amp's never going to sound as good as it can sound again, you know? And that, that's just a theory that's undisputable, that, that's just the way it is. But it's not for me, it's not undisputable anymore at all, even though it really is, because the reality of it is that it is. That's why I designed the Game Master. So I can get an amp with a lot of power to have the feel and sound of a cranked amp at any volume. And 
and that's the basic design of the game master. That's what it's for. Okay, so because this amp right now is extremely low. Okay. Basically, when you talk over this volume, if you're there playing that, right? Yeah. Can you hear me over there? Yeah. enough gain set on there for the sound of a crank damp, right? Okay. Without, I'm not going to use the word clean. So let's say without the game master, okay? That's where I was, okay? So, you know, but now the, the, the requirement is playing this low. Sure. Okay? So, I mean, that, that's it, that ain't a big store there. So you can turn that gain up substantially more. Right. And and just doing that is one thing, but then then having the feel of a crank damp. And Denny played the amps yesterday. So yes, I did. You, you can attest to that low volume. It, it literally, I mean, the thrust of it. was like for like for a lot like at my house like I write sometimes I get up in the middle of the night I want to get but I want to give it what it's got but this amp can do it at a low volume exactly. so I still know what I'm working with when tomorrow I wake up and I want yeah. to turn it up loud and it'll do it at any volume any one you select right you know and this is basically where you know I would spend my time playing sitting here I don't want to blow my head off for, for no reason especially if it's all there Mm -hmm. So basically, the gain master is part of the circuit in the overall picture, right? It is part of this amp. It's designed to go with this amp. It's like a lot of amps have gain circuits built into them, and what I've done is moved it out of the amp, so it's outboard on the pedal board uh, where your pedals are. So it's a great effects loop too. So and and and, and so it's in in a, a good location. Um, you, when you start putting all that stuff in an amp, you start hurting the clean sound of the amp. Um, and there's less just, control. Yeah, and you just wind up with too much stuff in the amp, you know. And it's, it, but but the whole the whole thing is 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 um, it, it liberates you from the volume versus tone thing, you know. It's it's it, it's a great thing. So let's talk for a second because I've been trying to eke out this question for for a few minutes now about the design and your approach and how the circuit that you've created is kind of operating there because that question is going to lead to a bunch of other questions like the logistics and the parts and the, the selection of parts it's and your, it's your thought process. It's everything. just said, it's every little part. Years and years and years, 30, 40 years of experimenting with all different parts and all different combination of parts and types of wiring. Even the wire I use, the specific type of wire um, and how I how I lay the wire out in the amp. It all it, there's nothing left to chance. It's all it's all about that. That's you know why they sound what they sound. It's a little bit of everything. Every, every so thing. you had mentioned that some of these parts are getting harder and harder to find. Yes. What makes them special? Why why is it getting harder to find them? Well, you know, even if you use certain modern parts. Every time you go to order them, you find out that that, that part does, they, they won't sell you that part anymore because of some cancer-causing situation 
in that part and they've changed it because it has uh, some lead in it or some of this or some of that but I mean that's the minor stuff some of the some of the stuff I use is real old, really old parts and, and they've been gone a long time yes there's tubes. not even yeah there's not even a chance of anybody making those things again so that that stuff I have to find constantly you know but you're, I'm, not, I'm not mass producing yet so you had me uh, mentioned that there was a tube manufacturer. That was in the early 90s. Okay. And that's a tube that has nothing to do with guitar ramps. Okay. But w where our conversation was coming from is a modern day tube that was a really good tube. By modern day, I mean in the 90s, you know, not now, but then, and that, and that only lasted a short while. And then they blew that place up in the Kosovo War, and that particular tube was gone from existence, never to come back. But it's examples like that that have interrupted some of the supply chain. Yes. Okay. And like you had mentioned that some of the components were made very early on and people have basically forgotten how to build them. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a good discussion about tubes. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't understand this. So the basis of your question, <clears throat> and correct me if I'm wrong, is why doesn't anybody make a good tube anymore? I mean, what, can't we just do that, right? Well, I, I, you would think, you yeah. know, we got all these modern gadgets like, uh, you know, 3D printing and stuff like that. Why can't we just push a printer and have it just spit out a new tube? So obviously the first thing someone would tell you is, you can't pollute like that anymore. I mean, the, the metallurgy and the materials used to make these tubes, um, you, you just can't do that. Well, that's not true because you go to China, they don't give a rat's ass about what they do in their country of filthy pollution, right? I mean, am I wrong? <laughs> okay. And countries like that, right? So why, well, why, you know, why can't they do it? Their tubes are just, you know, they're not very good. But anyway, that's part of it. But a, a thing that nobody, or not nobody, but most people don't understand about old tubes and all you guys that collect old tubes are going to going to dig this because you know exactly what I'm going to say. Um, take a company like Mullard. Okay. Uh, let's take a Mullard 12AX7. Um, there's so many. You collect them, you know. they got all different labels. They were made for different companies. Um, they're all made in that, in that plant, whatever. Take an RCA, RCA Mullard in the red box. A tube sounds different than a Shield logo made for somebody else or one that just said Mullard on it that didn't say Bogan or something else on it, right? Well, in those days, tubes were everything. They were what everything ran on. Everything ran on tubes. We didn't have all this other stuff. So we had engineers that designed tubes. And in a factory like the Mullard factory, brilliant engineers. So. Uh, let's say somebody had a, 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 a stereo system amp coming out for 1962 or whatever, and uh, they designed that amp and they wanted something with a little more low mid bump, let's say, on the tube. They would call Muller and say, Can you design us a tube? And they would say, Oh, yeah, no problem. And they would just do it, you know. Well, those guys are gone. Those guys are all dead. They're dead and gone. They don't exist in the world anymore. We don't have those guys no more. So that, you can forget about that happening. So. You know, that's that's part of why we don't have good tubes is because we don't have engineers that know how to make tubes. So the evolution and modern technology has kind of robbed us of our abilities to make some of these things. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you a perfect example, okay? Now, I, I don't want to diss somebody's tube because I actually use this tube, okay? So there's proof that I'm not, like, like downgrading these people, okay? A Russian company makes a, a long plate tube that they've made for years and, and now they sell it as a mullard, which they just bought the name, it's, you know. But it's a good tube, okay? Um, it sounds good. It's a good sounding preamp tube. you got to test through them like all of them and throw a bunch of them away. But, and now they, 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 they do this weird company thing to explain this is the reissue of the Muller, which it isn't. It's the same tube they used to make. It's a good tube, though, okay? It doesn't even fit in a tube socket, <laughs> okay? It's too big around, 
It, it's like if you try to put it in a shield tube socket, it's jammed against it. Like in my Game Master, I have to make a larger hole, and the hole is, it's like, well, the, the screws that hold the tube socket, it becomes outside of that, so it becomes a problem, right? right. Kind of. You guys don't even know what size the tube was, like the physical diameter of it, <laughs> you know? So this is what I'm talking about, about engineers and them not existing and stuff like that. So even if you found this good tube, and it is a good tube, and I like it, I'm not dissing the tube. I'm just telling you that there's, that there's stuff. And the supply chain is being interrupted because of evolution through technology, but yet you are a throwback, right? You yes. started from an era when all that stuff was commonplace. Mm -hmm. We had a time when engineers actually focused their attention designing these things, and now fast forward to the modern era, and those people have retired or died off, and we've basically forgotten what that era and how it operated, but now we're trying to capitalize or build a product that pacifies the need to bring tone to the world. Okay, so you Well, yes and no. What it is with me is I've just never changed. I've, 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 I've come up with a lot of these ideas when I was very young. And um, a lot of things in life are, oh, there's a reissue of such and such or this or that product or whatever. And, and, um, and then there's all the guys that would say, oh, I would never buy that. There's no way it could be as good as the original. And guess what? They're usually right. Okay? It's usually somebody just sold the name off or it's just somebody capitalizing on what there's an awareness now for something that used to be whatever. But that's not the case with me. With me, it's, I'm even worse than I was back then about finding just the right stuff. You know, It really hasn't changed at all. So if you buy a 10N from me and the, the, the whole idea of, of the 10N comes from the original amps that Sean Lane played that I built long before I even met Sean. But, um, but this amp is better. This amp has 30 years more of my, my experience in it. And, and there's none of that other stuff with me ever, you know, giving up on my ideas and, and using a cheaper part or this or that. You know? and, and, and to tell you the truth, if there's parts I can't get anymore, I'm just going to stop making them. That's what I would do. Well, and some of the parts are pretty expensive to make, right? Like the yeah. chassis itself. That, yeah. That's a, that's a complicated piece of metal work, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. They're made out of a metal, like I, I presume it's aluminum, right? I do use aluminum. Okay, but, chassis, I mean, yes. why use an expensive product like aluminum when there's plastic all over the place? Can't you just make them out of plastic? Well, you wouldn't want to make your chassis out of plastic, but um, why not? Because your cha chassis is your ground plane, so first of all, it has to be a metal that carries current. Okay. But can't you wire like a, a copper strip over yeah, it? Yeah, there's plenty of things with printed circuit boards in them that the ground plane is on the circuit board, so that could be done. But that that would be if that was being done in a guitar amp, you wouldn't even be in, in even close to the lead we're talking about here. You know, that would be. But your question is is a good one because. Like what about steel? Why can't you just use a steel chassis? You know, it's a lot easier to use than than a woman, right? Um, and you can, and famous Marshalls have them, and all kinds of amps have them. But some of us come to the determination that the different material on the chassis has a lot to do with the tone of the amp. There you go. That's what I was trying to get I know, to. I know, and I'm bringing you there. Yeah. <laughs> so, and and it's not just. Someone would say, oh, how could that make a difference? That doesn't make a difference. Well, no, it doesn't if you want to talk about it like that. But if you want to talk about it in link to how you designed everything else, because it does make a difference, and if you ever did design, you'd know it. So how you link all your other parts around that to make what that chassis sounds like, you know, become something that's part of, you know, why you wanted it over steel, um, then, yeah, then it makes a huge difference. And so I, it's the big picture. Yes. Basically, it's the culmination of all of the parts and all of the design theory mm -hmm. and all the way back to the wood that's in the instrument yeah, yeah. and the fingers on the player. Right. right. Okay. So if that chain is interrupted, then you're going to have a degradation in the quality of your tone. Exactly. Okay. So we talked about tone and how subjective it is because one player might like one type of tone for himself but it doesn't suit the other fella. Okay? Now, your equipment is apparently fairly adaptable, right? You can 
modify it without too much effort due to the circuit and the way the game master interacts with it, right? Yeah, but you know that that coming from a non-guitar player, that that's a hundred percent correct. Because you can you you've seen you know all kinds of people play through these and get ripping sounds all different than the other guy. But but if you're a guitar player, you can see there's a a synonymous thing going on with each player, and they would be the player that would like this because as all the guitar players out there know, no one thing works for everybody. So this concludes part one of this video. Um, remember I said, be careful what you wish for because you might just get it? Well, there's so much information that we didn't want to have a, a two hour long video. So we're going to slice it up and make it into smaller digestible pieces. Please uh, remember to like and subscribe so that you can get future notices of these videos as we put them up. Um, share them with your friends because we would like um, the public to understand some of the issues behind the scenes and what goes into uh, the products that get put on stage and stuff like that. And hopefully you're having a good time. Uh, enjoy your holiday. It is December and we are going toward one of the weirdest holiday seasons of all time. But um, bidding you good day. Thank you. Albane for love.